welcome back to the third night of the Walled City Music Festival online edition. Tonight we're going to have Jeffrey Ziegler and Friends, which is a, a concert that was filmed from the National Sawdust in Brooklyn and also from the Yamaha Artist Center in New York City. Cellist Jeffrey Ziegler has been to our festival more than any other artist. Tonight he brings a fresh new program. His Friends, uh, as the title of the concert says, uh, will be poet speaker Lynn Procope, composer steel pan player Andy Akiho, and percussionist Sean Dixon. Enjoy the concert.
What we wanted was to love you. Lately, I've become accustomed to the sound of gunfire echoing the distance and everything burning. Fireworks almost as well as bullets. My mother tells everyone who calls, vote and buy a gun. I tell everyone who calls, learn to target only that which might harm the children. The children forget to slip their masks. The children forget the necessity of laughter. The ground in America threatens us with sinkholes. We cling at the edges, become cartographers of minefield and boneyard. My sister dreams of flying away. My father shares everything in a fracture vernacular. My father dips his toe in amnesia, but drowns chest deep in dementia. He puddles all his secrets and I am too late to learn the language, too young to remember how to dance in the market. My father practices the steps to a rumba. What is left us, except the way our bodies are catalyzed in song. It is 2020. Before anyone believes black people, when we say we are dying, that our children are children, and they are being taken from us, even to ourselves, we become sudden facts. A woman closes her eyes against the soft bedroom light. She fears the death sentence of traffic stops. She snores low and sweet, her hair safe in a blue silk bonnet. She kisses her man, good night, sweet lover, good night. She plans something special for Friday night. She dies on a Thursday in a hurricane of bullets. Is it not enough? Is it not enough to hear a man bawl for his mother unto the end? Is it never enough to hear a man bawl for his mother unto the end? Grief is the ocean. The way it races into our throats, fills our mouths with salt, takes the very shape of us. It threatens to break our bodies on the rocks. It lulls us to sleep and rouses us again and again at 3 a.m. Grief is the ocean and the abyss it is trying to fill. It is the way the soul approaches music. Grief is the rhythm. What we wanted was your love. A black man I used to love, a black child, a black woman, a black shopper, a black student, a black construction worker, a black teacher, a black man I used to love, his father, his brothers, my brothers, my father, a black graduate, a black dropout, a black witch, a black lawyer, a black grandmother, a black daughter drives across the country, wanders at the beauty and swelter of a clear Texas night. When the siren intrudes, she is thinking it is only 170 miles to Jasper. She is wondering how long a man can live chained to the bumper of a speeding truck. A black family prepares for the ritual terror of the traffic stop. A black mother sits beside her one true love, asks us to witness, begs us to see how they do him unto death, how they do us.
the dream of dark red hibiscus, a sepal trapped between the teeth. Hibiscus is not a flower for mourning or capture. It bruises in the pluck. My brothers are a garden of hibiscus. My brothers came here seeking sweetness. All the time, I watch their skin for bruises. I watch their eyes for wariness or fear. And America keeps her teeth on their throats, keeps her cruel red arms wrapped tight, even in the smoke, blood. I am what some might call actual black. Midas kissed, golden black, bold and black, trained in black, in solidarity black. I study black, I make bacchanal black, I pray black and in several tongues. I am savannah dust black and cane suit black. I am a lanyap of black, can't stop, won't stop black. I am jab jab and mud from the Grandy Hills. I am good Catholic black and Shango Baptist black. Curse you and save you and curse you again black. Generationally traumatized black and intersectional black. Loud black, enraged black, relentless black, determined black, resilient black. I am the black that survives the flood and starts the fire each time. The black that knows there must always be a promise of burning. I hope black, I laugh black, I think black, I love black, which is to say my love like my grief be relentless. My love, like my grief, knows no end. My brother nonchalantly says, they dragged me from the car. They never cared that daddy was watching from the front door, trying not to wake our mother. My brother in his crisp suit, my brother, his face to the hood of the car, can barely imagine that he will marry, cannot yet hear his daughter, her laugh ringing back to him through the years, her soft bright eyes searching the ether of that moment when her father once fit the description, was the likely suspect. My brother, with a sharp lineup pressed to the burning hood of the car, doesn't know the actual black joy he will bring into the world. And my father, with his heart dragged through the car window to the very edge of an ocean of grief. Is he proof of black? I imagine the Apostle Thomas, who needed to see the Christ's shredded palms, to push his filthy nails about in the blood of his salvation, to reach into his Lord's side and clutch the pulsing flesh. Did Thomas keep his gaze fixed on the eyes of the one who might deliver him from every evil? Did Thomas hope to see him flinch? And then last night, we sat outside, black music curling around us from Kingston to Baltimore to Moncoco Road. We cracked the necks from fresh bottles of rum, poured our offerings into the corners of the yard. We welcomed our ancestors to the gathering. Their sweet breath cooled our faces. Our grandmother's hands dried our tears again. We pulled bullets from our teeth and the night collapsed about us like a shawl. The children ran between us and slipped into the tall grass. The children sang to the growing darkness. The children laughed into the miracle of their freedom. And we counted the stars hovered over America in the black of that night and the question marks too. We hummed and we sang, we danced and we served each other food we'd made with our own hands. We held each other so close. I tell you all we have ever wanted was a country and the space there to love.
Who the fuck is this? Here, a woman with a rough throat, thick smells of fruit and Central Market, Flatbush Avenue, and homemade relaxer. Rot, too. Jamet is Christopher Williams' mother, Ramona Moore's, too. Her grief, loose like a ball in their throats, howls a dry season savannah wind, invokes at least one ancestor jailed for slitting a man's throat for some brutality about her body. Jamet say, knock, knock, who the fuck is this? Don't make me come outside and bust your face. A reasonable response for a woman living the years in her own shabby, solitary home. 
A woman who most days does just see the dark side of other people's moon. Jamet's skin, just black. Not the kind of black that has gleamed darkness, not the airbrushed chocolate of modern magazines, but a black so unexotic it looks around the edges of the faces of bleached women sifting zabuka and plum in a Nostrand Avenue Korean market. The kind of black who braids her own hair and the hair of all the neighborhood girls, weaves a diet secret of twists and rice, draws spells from their tight scalp, Jamet does shave she own head bald some days for sensible reasons. She does dye it blonde or white or gold. Jamet is the kind of black that swells then recedes but seldom triumphs. Jamet legs tick and she backs strong like man back. Jamet did not come here for the victory march, she come for the Baba Green. Jamet is not the moon, she is the sun, practical and dangerous. Jamet uses each lean corded muscle to assume the posture of a woman who has buried at least one black child, but most certainly two. A woman who has been previously disapproved of and always chosen last. Jamet fires first. Jamet keeps a white handle razor in the hip pocket of her dress. Jamet comes from a long line of nigger women from behind the bridge or across the tracks. Charlotte Street, Lavanti Road, Mova or Gonzales. Jamet, mother's mother, sustained life by sheer force of her will and her own rough hands. Jamet will tell you all the places her mothers came from were plantation or hill country where Massa couldn't follow. Jamet will tell you we don't care how you survive, whatever you become, this is your badge of honor. Jamet raises her hands and keeps an eye on the exits. She understands black skin becomes blacker still the closer your lineage to Africa. The purer the pace of the bongo drum pounding out nine nights of grief. Blacker still when that drum pounds in your blood. A sound so loud it won't quiet down to let you rest. So black you escalate a situation by virtue of standing perfectly still. So black, you brace for gunfire all the time. So black, you bring a big stick to a knife fight and you win every time, some kind of way. But still, you tuck your proof of belonging deep in your bra, your phone, and your keys too. Jamet say, any nigger or misbegotten colonizer knocking on my door uninvited asking for what exactly but trouble knock knock like when knock come on my door i don't tremble to know if it's police come to take me man or ice come to send me back like most hours of most days is not one long shudder of worry for some danger outside my body that is settle in my womb and render sickness in the fat of my stomach make my bones thin as glass my body dense and slow and so sad it nearly make molasses jamet asks what does it mean to be black and transatlantic? What if we were allowed to believe we could spread our strong brown arms for flight? What does it mean to be black and transatlantic? What does it mean to be black and transatlantic? What does it mean? What does it mean? Thank you.